All right, all right, all right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, it's that time again. It is Front Porch Friday. Man, I hope you all had a great week. I hope you have an even better weekend. So today I have on store for this episode, one of the frequently asked questions I forgot last week, actually it's one of the most popular questions. I missed it on my list. And I'm going to read some comments from viewers on some of my past uh, videos. I will just say I owe an apology to Wayne Carroll. I thought you had deleted your comment, but I had saved it. Little did I know, I just found my comment button under my dashboard. And I found a lot of comments I hadn't replied to I thought I had. But little did I know, though, that YouTube held that comment as potentially inappropriate. That's why I didn't see it on the video. But I okayed your comment, and I saved it anyway. So, anyway, we'll get to that later. So, <sighs> I seem to always have this sign of thing going on when I do a video. So, the probably the... One of the top three questions I get is, why don't you wear dentures? Where are your dentures? Do you have dentures? Or some form of that. I get that quite a few uh, emails and comments on that. The question is, yes, I do have some. I don't like wearing them because they're uncomfortable. And because I have yet to have any critter out here or my dog or anybody I know complain about me not wearing dentures. I know, I know, I know. We live in a world where everything is judged by parents. But I still couldn't care less. That buck I shot last year, I think he was laughing at me when he seen that I didn't have dentures. That I, I solved that problem. Oh, man, I'm, I'm still doing this. There's no hair there to pull on. So, that's right. I, I did buy me a DIY denture kit off of um, Etsy. I haven't made them yet, but I'm going to try it. Give it a try. Uh, my other ones, I've had two sets. They just, no matter what they do, they do not feel good. And so I'm not going to wear them. I'm sorry if I offend some of y'all, but hey, that's the way it goes. So, now you know. Annoying. Half the battle. Go Joe. Okay. Sorry. It's Friday. What can I say? It's feeling good. So. Uh, oh. There they are. Let's get on to the comments. My most commented on over 100 comments video was the comment. Uh, was a video about five reasons why I would not buy a Dirksen portable building again. And I'll leave a link right up here to that. Now, overall, probably 80% of the comments were favorable, thanking me for making that video. Some of y'all, on the other hand, didn't quite understand the title, Five Reasons Why I Wouldn't Buy Another Dirks and Portable Building. I don't know what you assumed, but it's five reasons why I would, not why you shouldn't, or somebody else shouldn't, but why I won't. And some of y'all really got birth hurt, birth, butt hurt over that. Um, here's one. His handle was Use Rumble. Use Rumble. They did not force you to buy this thing. All these inspections should have been performed by you before purchase. They have a no questions, pay as you go plan. If you have an issue, before paid off, they will just come take it away and sell it to someone else. It's all on you. You should have bought a mobile home. No way this thing was worth that. Hell, you could build one of these things for almost nothing. Well, use Rumble. Did you watch the video? Because I think your comment kind of suggests that maybe if you did watch it, you didn't quite understand the whole thing. But what I'm going to take a issue with is that your last 
sentence, no way this thing was worth that. Well, probably. You pay for convenience or, or you're buying time. Hell, you could have bought one of these things for almost nothing. Well, you have obviously haven't priced lumber lately uh, for a 12 by 24. I don't know what you consider nothing. Maybe you're extremely wealthy, Bill Gates wealthy, and maybe four or $5,000 isn't nothing to you. But for a lot of us, it is. Now, I did price, uh, before I went, since I do build these, I spec'd one out, and it was anywhere from $3,500 to $4,000, and that was last year when a 2 before cost $3.30. I built a 8x12 Gambrel roof shed for a customer, and I did that for about $1,500. That same shed now would be uh, right around $2,800 to $3,200. This thing now, if I built it, would be in the seven or eight thousand dollar range. So, you, anytime someone says you can build these for nothing, they really don't know what they're talking about. But hey, your name is Use Rumble. <laughs> we just had a guy caught with a hundred pounds of meth in Tulsa flying plane. His his name, his real name was Badlands. McGentry or something like that. Yeah, Badlands. Who names our kid Badlands? <laughs> yeah, I don't wonder if that maybe is where he was conceived and they <laughs> named him that so they wouldn't forget or something. Who knows? Anyway, it was hilarious. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone named Slim said on the same video, my wife and I had the same exact issues with the one we ordered. Unfortunately, the quality workmanship is not what it should be when you think of the Dirksen brand, and that's exactly right. If you read everything Dirksen puts out, they make these unquestionably top-of-the-line sheds and buildings that are, you know, uh, I think they even even say Amish quality. Okay, everybody thinks, oh, Amish, oh, man, it's just, there's nothing wrong with Amish buildings. They're just so great. They're perfect. I've seen Amish built buildings, I've seen redneck built buildings, I've seen blue collar dudes building buildings and there's no difference between that and the Amish built building or Amish built home. They're, you know, let me let you on a little secret Amish in a minute since there's so many around here, they can do crappy work just as e easily as other people and sometimes they do. Okay, so, um, and, and you're right, Slim, um, for, for the marketing that Dirksen puts out about how quality building they make, this, this is average from what I've seen out of hundreds and hundreds of portable buildings I've looked at and that I've repaired and I, I've built, so, um, some of you say, you should have seen it before you bought it. I did see some of the issues with this before I bought it, but having built them, I knew I could fix them. But again, the issue, the, the, the video was why I wouldn't buy another one. Okay? Some of y'all just not quite getting that. Um, my other issue is, if you go buy a Cadillac, <clears throat> or a Porsche, Lamborghini and you pull it and you're driving down the road and the wheel falls out off and you go you get out hell they didn't tighten the lug nuts up do you stop and say you know what I should have checked the lug nuts before I bought this brand new car or you go down and and you the radio's playing all of a sudden it stops and you pull over and there's a you know you take it back to the dealership and they say oh it was just a wire come loose I should have crawled around inside and made sure all the wires were tightened. Do you do that? No, you don't. You assume, since it's new, it'll have no issues. Same way with a shed. I assume that it's new, there'll be a few issues. So, 
Then we get, we like I said, about 80% of the comments on that video were, were positive and thanking me and all that. Cool. Um, and here comes Mr. Carroll's comment. <laughs> you could have seen every one of these reasons before, all capital letters, you bought this shed. Why didn't you? You look very dirty and, and grossly obese. Why should anyone follow your advice? Well, Wayne, <laughs> you're right. I was kind of dirty. When, when you live off grid, and I, if I remember right, I shot that video with breaks between chores I was doing outside. You, you tend to get dirty when you actually do manual labor. Or at least I do. Um, I... This is not a white collar type living here. You don't uh, call the gardener in to, yes, uh, gardener, um, get these rocks out of the yard, please, and cut those stumps down a little lower. I, I stumbled upon one last night. No, you, you get dirty. And if you listen to anybody who lives off grid in this type of situation where every day is a deliberate way of life, you know, there, there's some little secrets that I've seen one other YouTuber who lives off grid and I forgot who it was. I think it was one who lived in Alaska. Maybe, maybe not. Actually, I think I've seen two say, maybe I should do a video about little secrets off griders don't tell the YouTube public. But it was funny because she said, you know, I hate to admit it, but I go sometimes three and four days with the same pair of pants. I hear you're not washing every day. You're not, uh, I don't take a shower every day out here. When I'm hauling water in, my shower consists of a five gallon shower uh, in a solar bag, one of those five gallon or is it eight gallon? I think it's five gallon solar showers from Walmart. Now when it's really cold, there's a truck stop about 20 miles away I will go to sometimes. Or if I'm friend's house or, you know, in town or something, but out here in the, in the bush, or off grid, you don't take showers every day, or I don't. And I know several other YouTubers just say the same thing. When water's at a premium, you know, thanks to the pandemic, we can get uh, the the uh, little wipies now every place. So, Wayne, sorry, it's just the way it is. And as far as ob being obese, you're right. I was grossly obese then. I've lost 70 pounds since then, Hoss. So hopefully you're a little happier, almost 70 pounds. So hopefully you're, that makes you a little happier. And my question is though, do you always judge um, people like that by appearance and whether you will take their, their advice or not? I don't ask anyone to take my advice. I do these videos, one, because I like doing them. Two, because I've said before, hopefully my next generation of family can look back on these and go, huh. That's where Grandpa lived. Hey, you little Grandpa lived way out there in the six. So, uh, you know, it's a crazy the stuff he did. That's why. But some of the best ex advice I ever received in my life come from grungy old men in overalls. And I can't really say I've got a lot of good advice from people in suits who shower twice a day and... I don't know how, why that worked, works out that way, but some of the best life lessons I've ever heard from will come from working men and women. So, anyway, Wayne, I did approve your, anyway, everybody should see it. So, John Zoppa, Zopper, John Zoppa, Zopper on the, the video about uh, why the Chinese buying real land in Oklahoma. Up here, once again. He says, no one wants to live there, or the Indians are in the process of reclaiming their land. Sell it to China, and the Indians can't fight China. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to mean. Uh, no one wants to live here. Well, uh, this, uh, for the last 10, 20 years, Oklahoma has had a population increase, and for a lot of the same reasons that Texas and Tennessee has a uh, population increase. The land is uh, reasonable. 
We don't have no crazy, well, we, we do have some farmland that is crazy expensive and some uh, land close into big cities are crazy or in the suburbs are crazy expensive. But you get out here, you get out in the rural land, you can still find land under 2,000 an acre. You can, there are places in the state where you can find land under 1,000 an acre. So, uh, as far as the Indians reclaiming their land, I'm, I haven't heard that. <laughs> um, not sure where you got that there, John, but that, that isn't true either. On the, my probably the second most popular video I have so far was the, the um, Black Max Chainsaw video, unboxing. Again, I'll leave that here. Jake F. Gonna get this. Now he commented this back around October. So he, this was a Halloween comment and it cracked me up. Gonna get this for a costume and take the chain off. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, that would be really fun. Okay. Billy Bob Bocephus. <laughs> yes, Billy Bob Bocephus commented. And let's see if I can read this right. It was hilarious. I gotta get my that saw, then I get a gerb cutting big redwoods in California. I'm a gonna get rich. <laughs> you go for it, Billy Bob. You go for it, bro. Okay. Oh man, Randy Kovadinka or something said Kodinka or something like that. I can't. I butchered your last name, Randy. Sorry. For fifty dollars more, you could have bought a steel MS one seventy. You can get parts at every steel dealer. Where are you going to get parts for your Walmart saw? Pretty sure not Walmart. Well, I don't know what parts you think you're going to need there, Randy. But I, I'm, I'm working on a video now about where to get parts for a Black Max chainsaw. And bars, chains, spark plugs, stuff like that you can get at Walmart. Um, I even contacted Oregon. To see what replacement bars they have and they sent me a list of parts list of of the uh, bars that will fit the black max chainsaw so as far as other parts sprockets and stuff like that you get them at a chainsaw dealer because those are pretty common parts and the chainsaw dealers have these reference manuals where they can look these parts up and get them for you uh, Brian Prophet also commented on the same um, Black Max Chainsaw. Still, MS-170 will last triple what this saw will for $60, 60 more dollars, and I bet it's more powerful. I asked Brian how he come up with the figure of lasting triple what the Black Max was. He, he, had, he had no hard evidence on that. Now, I'm not against steel. I've had, I've got uh, I did own quite a few steels over my life. And I will say the AVs, the OOs, were, in my opinion, much better saws than the MS series they're running now. Uh, but they're still good saws. Uh, as far as more powerful, no, it's not. The MS-170 is about a 30cc saw there, Brian. The Black Max is a 38cc. So it, it's, it's got some power to it. Last and triple, I don't know. I have put my little Black Max through all kinds of abuse. Cutting this st stuff down level of the ground. Cutting rotted wood, which y'all know it's like cutting dirt at most. And it just keeps on going. Um, usually when it's cool like it is now, I have to crank it about five times. I choke it, pull it three times, or I pump the bulb, primer bulb, choke it. Pull it about two or three times, push the choke in. Usually, the first or second one after that, it starts. Still, this thing has got I don't know how many hours on it. Probably two or three gallons of gas ran through it. I mean, I cleared so far all this stuff here with it. So, that's pretty much most of my comments. I love getting comments from y'all. I don't care good, bad, and different, even ones like Wayne. You know, um, and I just, re I'm, I'm sorry if I haven't got to your comments. I thought 
under my notifications I was trying to stay up with my comments but I just last day or so looked at the comment uh, tab in my dashboard and there's a bunch of comments I hadn't replied to and I try to reply to every one good bad or indifferent I don't care um, it's our difference that makes this world great to live in and makes the world go around so um, and if you know me you know I don't get offended if I, the only way I could possibly get offended, and I've told my daughter this since she was this tall, you can only get offended at what somebody says if you value that person. And if I don't know you, how am I going to get offended at what you say? If I get offended at something a stranger says about me, that makes me a weak individual. Sorry. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Whether you're like Wayne and you judge people by their appearance, um, I don't care. <laughs> so go ahead, leave leave the good, bad, ugly, which by the way is coming on this weekend at uh, Grit TV. It's the Spaghetti Western Weekend. I will be watching it again. Uh, love them, but good, bad, indifferent, ugly, whatever. Leave your comments. Help the channel out by liking, subscribing, and sharing the videos. That's you know that's one of the ways I really appreciate I love people hit me up and say hey I shared your video on this forum or over here or something I love that so I don't know how long I'm running but it is probably longer than usual I don't know but I had a blast so uh, I'll do these every once in a while love read, read uh, viewer comments love to answer questions so again, I hope you all had an awesome weekend. Thank you for watching. I appreciate every one of you and um, have an awesome weekend. So Donald, front porch Friday and we're out of here. Another one in the books. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> I always like to do that.